here with us at Smart Life at the Baptist Health South Florida studios is Dr. Ellen Schwartzbart, an obstetrician and gynecologist. Welcome to Smart Life, Doctor. It's great to have you. Thank you for having me. And today we're discussing a bit of a heavy topic. It's endometriosis. So for those of our viewers who don't know what endometriosis is, what, give us a little overview. So endometriosis is when the endometrium, okay, you hear that word in endometriosis, that's actually the lining of the uterus that sloughs when a woman has her menstruation mm -hmm. is abnormally located in other places within the pelvis. That's like basic 101 endometriosis. Is this common in your patients? And if so, what's, what, what causes it? Right. So about statistically one in 10 women will have endometriosis. Wow. So classically, um, they come in with severe menstrual pain mm -hmm. um, that happens bad cramps, and they could also have pain at other points in their menstrual cycle. Um, infertility is a big common complaint when it comes to endometriosis. Infertility, okay, so it's good to know that. Um, what, how does it occur in the endometriosis? How does that occur? What happens? So this is not something that we know for sure, but we think it might be sort of like backwards menstruation. We're not, we don't know exactly, but for sure it doesn't occur before a woman has started her period and it doesn't really occur afterwards. So right. for whatever reason, the blood sort of goes backwards and then abnormally implants within the pelvis. And then these implants is what generally causes the symptoms. They're sort of genetic risk factors and other things, but we think um, that's sort of the theory. I'm curious to know, is there a specific patient that would be at a higher risk for endometriosis? And if so, what are, because as you said, it almost feels like a really bad uh, a menses. So the symptoms, are they common? So a lot of women have met bad menstruation right. when their cramps are bad. So uh, not every woman who has bad cramps has endometriosis. So um, we sort of have to figure it out when we start to treat them, if they don't get better as easily, and then if the infertility does become an issue. But genetics can increase your risk of it and so forth. Can you have it without having any pain? Um, you can. So endometriosis is oh, very wow. is very interesting that um, it doesn't always correlate with the amount of endometriosis as to how much symptoms somebody has. So mm -hmm. classically, when somebody does have infertility and then you actually do a laparoscopy and you look, that's the only way to know with 100% certainty if somebody has endometriosis is to actually do surgery and to see it. But we don't always mm -hmm. do that right. today. We many times will just treat with presumption, just assuming. So then at what point would you go ahead and give a diagnosis then? Yeah, so we sometimes will just assume. You just treat them okay. based on symptoms, what's going on, and you say, this kind of looks like endometriosis. We're going to assume that you have it and treat them mm -hmm. as, th as though they do. And the infertility mm -hmm. patient's a little bit different, right. but for somebody that's not a concern, you'll just many times go ahead and treat them. Can it cause other health problems, other health concerns? Um, so just sort of quality of life interfering with daily functioning, which is significant, um, painful intercourse, so that can interfere with relationships, that kind of thing. But with the endometriosis, uh, is, does it come in waves or how is this? Is it almost like a cycle that it comes like, let's say you have pain for a certain amount of days or is this sort of ongoing? So it can be just ongoing and progress. Um, especially if you're not adequately being treated for it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Okay, and now the link between fertility, we know that's one of the causes can be infertility. So what's that link between endometriosis and fertility? So if the endometriosis is more severe, you can actually have scarring and then that can affect the fallopian tubes and then that makes sense you know if there's an issue with the fallopian tubes the egg and the sperm aren't going to be able to meet but sometimes the endometriosis might not be that severe you can have just what we call like an implant on the uterus on the ovary and those patients have some type of infertility where they're having difficulty getting pregnant and we don't even really understand quite why that's happening right. at this time of point there is no cure mm -hmm. for it why is that? Um, as long as a woman is really menstruating and the implants are there, you can treat it temporarily, but it can really still come back. So the 
treatments just sort of help, but it won't necessarily make it go away 100%. Now, can you help patients with endometriosis? So you, you mentioned treatment, so what's out there? What hopeful options are there? Right, so I mentioned that it's the endometrium, and um, that's what sloughs when you have your period. So if you can stop that process from happening, many times the symptoms will be alleviated. So we usually start by trying to stop the menstruation, and the number one way we do that first is birth control pills. Okay. Um, so, and women can take the birth control pills and not get in their menses at all. We call that continuous birth control pills. So if anybody takes birth control pills, they know that the last week is when they actually get a period, but you can skip that. And we use the pill, and a lot of times in OBGYN, not just for prevention of pregnancy, we use it as a medication. Wow, and this okay. is one of those instances as a treatment for endometriosis to just stop a woman's periods from happening. Besides that, and besides the pill, any other medications out there? Yes, absolutely. There's other medicines. Um, as we sort of move on, they sometimes can have more side effects, but there's a newer medicine out there um, now. Um, used to only be available in injection. Now it is an oral pill, and it kind of shuts down the whole body, prevents ovulation. By preventing ovulation, again, you're preventing uh, menstruation from happening, and it's the same type of concept that you're going to prevent those right. implants from being active. What's the name of that medication? It's called Orlissa. Orlissa, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what about patients that find no relief? The medication doesn't help, the birth control is not helping. What do you do then? So, it depends on where they are in their childbearing years, if fertility mm -hmm. is an issue, but many times a hysterectomy at that point wow. will be. Um, an option for them, but that's if they're no longer interested in childbearing. Okay. And what else do you think our viewers should know about this terrible the condition? Yeah. So you want to make sure that your doctor you go and that they listen to you because it's not always um, known that it is endometriosis. So many times you just have these complaints of painful periods and there are treatment options out there um, and to know that you can get help. And can you get pregnant even with endometriosis? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Our um, infertility treatments out there are excellent, and uh, there's many options out there to help women with endometriosis. Oh, that's such great news. Excellent, absolutely. Yeah. Doctor, well, thank you for coming. Thank to, you. Uh, on the Smart Life. Thank you for Hope having you me. You have a question? We've got the answers. Stay tuned for our Ask the Experts segment.